Okay, so Eleanor, have you got your mojo back? Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, what? Yes. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I have uh, seen uh, you are on my list of active speakers, so it does mean that it's working. Normally, quite. it means it is working. Uh, yes, yeah. you, you need to you need to see that little white dot. Um, okay. When I said to Eleanor, have you got your mojo back? Uh, your mojo is like your power, your um, ability to do things, your magic secret sauce, if you like. <laughs> So, um, and, and and if I you lose like your mojo, have... it's like you've lost oh, your yeah. magic, um, your influence, if you like. But it can also be, I mean, I was saying this weekend to Hubby when he was trying to explain something about HTTPS and the internet. And I went, it's just magic. And he went, what do you mean? I said, it's just fairy dust and magic. <laughs> That really annoyed him. <laughs> By the way, Lee, uh, every cool. time I want I want to uh, to to go to the forum, they give me always a message. This site is not uh, safe. It's probably what you need to do is refresh your cache because we're now HTTPS on. Um, we're HTTPS on Learn English, okay, but we're not HTTPS on the forum okay uh, for example I log into the forum when I go to the forum I don't get that message um, I get your connection to this site is not secure okay and that just means it's not HTTPS um, but I don't get an it's not safe so I think you need to refresh your cache okay the only way you'd get that problem is if you come from an HTTPS site into um, the forum through a link that's saying HTTPS okay if somebody tries to link to the web to the forum using HTTPS you will get a warning because it's not HTTPS and I can't afford HTTPS for the forum vanilla charges too much if it becomes a huge issue in the future with Google etc um, then we'll probably have to move everything on to Discuss only because Discuss is HTTPS and they don't charge us for the privilege. But we'll see how it goes for now, okay? But um, it's as secure as it was before, okay? <laughs> LearnEnglish.de Learn English is now fully HTTPS compliant. We ran the test at the weekend. Yes, still got a few tweaks and missing files to find, but uh, anyway, okay? Okay, so on that note, we will go to, um, oh, where were we up to last week? Uh, we were up to, it was at Circle City ere the year was out. Okay. So, find that in the book. It's a, in, in an awkward place, but um, there you go. Uh, Marco, Rima, are you in place? In the okay, book? Have you found your bookmark? <laughs> I, uh, yes, I found it. Okay, whenever you're ready to start reading then. Okay. It was at Circle City. Uh, the year was out the, that uh, Pete's apprehensions were realized. Released. Uh, Black Parton, a man evil tempered and malicious, had been picking a quarrel with the tenderfoot at the bar when Thornton stepped good nature naturally between. Buck, as was his custom, was lying in a corner. He had on post watching his master's every action. Barton struck out without warning, straight from the shoulder. Thornton was sent spinning and saved himself from falling only by clutching the rail of the bar. Those who were looking on, on heard what was neither bark, bark nor yelp, but something which is best described as a roar. And they saw Buck's uh, body rise up in the air as he left the floor for Barton's throat. The man saved his life by instinctively throwing out his arm, but was held back backward to the floor with Buck on top of him. Buck loosed his teeth 
from the flesh of the of the arm and draw in again for the throat. This time the ma man succeeded only in partly block blocking, and his throat was torn open. Then the crowd was upon Buck, and he was driven off. But while a surgeon checked the bleeding, he rolled up and down, growling furiously, attempting to rush in, and being forced back by an array of hostile clubs. A miner's meeting, called on the spot, decided that the dog had sufficient provocation, and Buck was discharged. discharged. But his reputation was made, and from that day his name spread through every camp in Alaska. Later on, in the fall of the year, he saw John Thornton's life in quite another fashion. The three partners were lining a long and narrow pulling boat down a bed stretch of rapids on the 40 mile creek. Hans and Pete moved along the bank snubbing with a thin manila rope from tree, from, uh, tree to tree, while Thornton remained in the boat, helping its descent by means of a pole, and shouting directions to the shore. Buck on the bank, worried and anxious, kept abreast of the boat, his eyes never off his master. At a particularly bad spot, where a ledge of barely submerged rocks jutted out into the river. Hans cast off the rope, and while Thornton pulled the boat out into the stream, ran down the bank with the end in his hand to snap the boat when it had cleared the ledge. This, this it did, and was flying downstream in a current as swift as a mill race when Hans checked it with the, the rope and checked too suddenly. The boat flirted over and snapped it uh, to the bank bottom up, bottom up while Thornton flung she sheer out of it, was carried downstream toward the worst part of the rapids, uh, a stretch of wild, of wild water in which no swimmer could live. Could live. Could live. Uh, Buck had sprung in on the instant, and at the end of 300 yards, amid, 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 amid a mad swirl of water, he overhauled Thornton. When he felt him grasp his tail, Buck headed for the bank, swimming with all, with all his splendid strength. But the progress shoreward was slow, the progress downstream amazingly rapid. From below came the f fatal roaring uh, where the wild current went wilder and was rent in shreds and spray by the rocks which uh, thrust through like the teeth of an enormous comb. The suck of the water as it took the beginning of the last steep, steep pitch was frightful, and Thornton knew that the shore was impossible. He scrapped furiously over, over a rock, bruised across a second, and, and struck a third with crushing force. He clutched its slippery top with both, both hands, releasing back, and above the roar of the churning water shouted, Go, Buck, go! Buck could not hold his own and swept on downstream, struggling desperately, desperately, but unable to win back. When he heard Thornton's com uh, command repeated, he partly reared, reared out of the water, throwing his head high, as though for a last look, then turned obediently toward the bank. He swam powerfully and was dragged ashore by Pete and Hans at the very point where swimming ceased to be possible and destruction began. They knew that the time men could cling to a slippery rock in the face of that dry, dri driving current was a matter, a matter of minutes, and they ra ran as fast as they could up the bank to a point far above where 
Thornton was hanging on. They touched the line with which uh, they had been snubbing the boat to Buck's neck and shoulders, being careful that it should neither strangle, strangle him nor impede his swimming, and launched him into the stream. Uh, he struck out bold, boldly, but not straight enough into the stream. He discovered the mistake too late when Thornton was abreast of him and the bear half doz dozen strokes away while he was being carried helplessly past. Okay, Hans well, promptly oh, snapped. Yeah, well done. Okay. <laughs> Nicely read. Nicely okay. read. Sorry. <laughs> I was um, no, a bit stuck on my um, key. I don't know why, but it wouldn't uh, switch on. So, uh, Welcome, Oscar. Hi, I see Hello, you tried to welcome. log in earlier, but uh, yeah, the session was yes. back for Marion's session today, so sorry if you were waiting in vain. It was on the calendar though, so <laughs> I'm not 100% sorry. <laughs> no I only problem. noticed you logged in when I was logging in. I was looking at who'd been logged and I was like, oh no, Oscar was here. And he would have probably thinking, well, oh, it's been cancelled, but it hasn't, just put back. Okay, my session this morning was cancelled as the next two weeks is the same, by the way. Okay, this session will run. My webinar jam session will be Marion's Skype session. So uh, I hope that's not too disruptive. Um, Oscar, are you okay to read today? Uh, yes, but I don't know where the text is. That's okay, we can give you the link, not an issue. Okay, I'm sure somebody will send you the link. <laughs> Let's have a look at Marco's, uh, Rima's Thank you. Okay. So, Rima, here are the individual words. Okay. To realize. So it says realized. Uh, uh, realized. You started saying it correctly and then you decided it was a different word altogether. I can't remember what you I, actually I, said, but. <laughs> released. <laughs> released. I said yeah, released. Yeah, but it is realized. Yeah, yeah. Now, in this. Realized. In this context, it means comes about. If you realize a plan, realize can also mean to suddenly understand something or to recognize that something's happening. Out. Yeah. But in this context, it means to come about, to actually happen. If you realize a plan, it means it happens, okay? Oh, to realize, oh, okay, Yeah, it's okay. a to slightly it. different meaning that, than you're probably oh. used to, okay? So there are two meanings, okay? Um, oh. So it's a realize or s, s sound, realized um, or realized. Okay, I, I tend to say realize with an S, but it's a Z sound, which, whichever way you spell realized. it. Realized. Yeah, realized. Okay. 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 Uh, so it can mean to be aware, and it can also mean to cause something to happen or to um, for something to actually um, have a form. Okay, there are, I think, about four or five. You can also um, make a profit, yeah, to realize a profit. So it's not always the word you probably understand of being aware of something. <laughs> and now you've realized <laughs> it's not always yeah. to realize. <laughs> I love English because of it, but it, it can drive you a bit crazy. Okay, the next one is loosed. Now, it's a funny one. I would say loosened or released, okay? To let loose this comes from, um, but I think it's a slightly old-fashioned way um, of saying it. So I probably use released instead, but it is loosed. To loosen, loosed. Try it. Loose. Yeah, because it the the one with the z sound is lose with one o to lose something and to loosen something that hard z and that soft s. Okay. The next one is actually prowled from to prowl, to prowl. Cats prowl at night when they're looking for mice. To prowl. So prowled. Try it. Uh, to prowl. 
that's it. And prowled. prowled here. Yeah, prowled. Prowled. That's it. Now, the reason I say that is because prowl, uh, Eleanor and I are proles, aren't we, Eleanor? <laughs> Proud to be proles. Ah, yes. <laughs> They're just basically members of the working class, a prol, okay? I think there's a TV programme yeah. called Proles. It's a comedy about Rome, but I've never watched it. It's on late at night, so it's probably... Um... Is it predators prowl yes. uh, to their prey? To their prey? That's right, yes. It means to... Oh, okay. um, if you're on the prowl as well. Okay, you can be on the prowl if you're out looking for um, trouble or if you're out looking for, uh, I don't know, a date. <laughs> but it's stealthy. It's the stealthy act. So you don't just walk up, you prowl, sort of like looking around corners. It's a bit suspicious looking as well. <laughs> okay. But if you go into Nottingham on a Friday night, you'll find lots of women on the prowl. So be careful. <laughs> OK, the next one is <laughs> the next one is scraped. Scrapped would mean to be thrown away with a double P. And with single P, it's from to scrape. Yeah? And in this case, it's literally he's scraping. A, it, it's very... A horrible feeling when you're scraping across rocks in fast moving water. It's happened to me. I don't recommend it. So scraped. Try it. Scraped. That's it. Good. And the next one is churning with a ch sound rather than a sh. So it's churning. Churning. That's churning. it. Yeah. When, when everything's um, sort of fast moving in a river the water's churning when it's turning back on itself and it's very choppy it's churning you also churn milk to make butter okay that's called to churn okay churning but in this case it's it's the movement of the water very rough white water the next one and you've done this before one this one you might want to write it down and practice above I know it looks like ove, above. but it's of, above, yeah. like love, love, <laughs> above, try it, above, that's above. it, yeah. and above. the next one, above. it's abreast, when you're abreast of somebody, yeah, it's nothing to do with a breast, like a woman's breast, it's just to be at an equal um, point to them, especially if you're in a race, maybe, if you're abreast, it means you're side by side, okay, now, neck to neck. Neck, neck, yeah, exactly, yes. Um, Burton as well, not Barton, Burton. Bur Bur Burton. Yes, Burton. Silent R. Yeah, Burton. well, we don't roll our R's the way we used to, so Burton, okay. But not Burton. Barton, Burton. not Barton. Barton. Burton. Yeah. And then um, you get a smiley, yes, because it was from to live, not live, as in this session is live, but to live. Okay, well done. <laughs> okay, thank you. One of April's favourite words, <laughs> not. <laughs> Any questions before we move on? Uh, turning is, is a way of... Uh waters of river flow is it uh, sorry churning yes it's, is a, it's it a way like of describing a movement water. of water yeah it's a way of describing I mean, it's got, water yeah it's a way of okay the water is churning it's but it's very means it's very rough turning back on itself whirlpools holes um stoppers rivers have their own vocabulary uh, but this is just is using this word to show it's um very rough okay the water was churning okay, okay. around him, like like he was in a, a churn, being tossed about, yes? So any, any liquid um, can use this if it's very rough, if it's moving roughly. Um, Eleanor, drilling and a frown. Is that a question? No, oh. that's this. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my family. 
Oh, you've got noisy drilling again. Oh, my goodness. What are they uh, doing? Uh, <laughs> they knocking I, down your I house. Have, <laughs> I, I thought they had a wonderfully renovated house, but apparently they aren't content. People oh. rarely are. We like to put our stamp I, on things, I'm afraid. Oh, can you hear it? I think I can occasionally hear, hear this. But it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, at my place, it is. Uh, but it, uh, I can, I'm happy. Yeah. I, I, I sympathize. Maybe get some bucket heads, a bucket headset like I've got. It really does cut out uh, <laughs> any else external noise. <laughs> you get these um, padded earpieces. They're very good at cutting out noise. <laughs> Okay, no more that no more questions then. I'll presume I'm just looking. Uh, working, drilling, working. Is that the same? Shiny working was about drilling. <laughs> so, I, I guess. The... Okay, cool, cool. Okay, cool. R remember to use at at Eleanor. Working, <laughs> then I know it's not me. Oh, thank you, Marco. Thank you, Rima. That's this was for Friday's session where we've been doing um, uh, sort of a little bit about agriculture, farming, and um, pre-industrial revolution stuff, which is similar, strangely similar to what you were doing this morning. Anybody would think um, Marion and I had been talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's all a cunning plan, you know. Okay, um, next person to read is Shiny. Shiny, are you okay to read today? How is your voice? Yes. Excellent. Good, good. Thanks. A little bit croaky today. Uh, sorry about that. A little croaky. Okay. Hans. Well, when 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 you need to stop, just say just stop. I mean, I'll time you, but um, if you feel the need to stop before that, don't think you've got to carry on. Okay. Whenever okay, you're ready, then. You. Okay. Hans promptly, okay, thank you. Hans promptly snapped with the rope, a spell bug or a boat. The rope the thus, thus tightening on him in the sweep of the current. He was jerked under the surface, and under the surface he remained till his body struck against the bug, and he was held out. He was half drowned and Hans and Pete threw him themselves upon him, pounding the breath into him and the water out of him. He staggered to his feet and fell down. The faint sound of Thornton's voice came to them, and though they could not make out the words of it, they knew that he was in his extremity. His master's voice acted on Buck like an electric shock. He sprang to his feet and ran run up the bank ahead of the men to the point of his previous departure. Again, the rope was attached and he was launched, and again he struck out, but this time straight into the stream. He had mis miscalculated once, but he would not be guilty of it a second time. Hans paid out the rope, permitting no slack, while Pete kept it clear of coils. Buck held on till he was on the line straight above Thornton, then he turned up and with the speed of an express train headed down upon him. Thornton saw him coming, and a spark struck him like a battering ram. With the whole force of the current behind him, he reached up and closed with both arms around the shaky neck. Hans snapped the rope around the tree, and Buck and Thornton were jerked under the water, strangling, suffocating, sometimes one uppermost, 
and sometimes the other, dragging over the jagged, jagged button, smashing against rocks and snacks. They filled, filled into the bunk. Thornton came to Bailey downward and being violently propelled back and forth, back and forth across a drift log by Hans and Pete. His first glaze, glaze was for Buck, over whose limp and apparently lively body need was setting up a howl. While Skeet was licking the wet face and closed eyes, Thornton was himself bruised and battered, and he went carefully over Buck's body. When he had been brought around, finding three broken ribs, that settles it, he announced. We camp right here, and camp they did. Till Buck's ribs needed, and he was able to travel. That winter at Dawson, Buck performed another exploit, not so hero heroic, perhaps, but one that put his name, name many notches, higher on the totem pole of Alaskan fame. This exploit was particularly great, gratifying, gratifying to the three men, for they stood in need of the outfit which it fur furnished and were enabled to make a long-desired trip into the Virgin East, where miners had not yet appeared. It was brought about by a conversation in the El Dorado Saloon, in which men waxed boastful of their favorite dogs, but because of his record, was the target for those men, and Thornton was driven stoutly to defend him. At the end of half an hour, one man stated that his dog could start a sleigh with 500 pounds and walk off with it. A second bread, 600 for his dog, and a third, 700. Good, well done. Poo, poo. Oh, okay, yeah, Thank sorry. <laughs> okay, so well done, nicely read. Um, let's have a look at the individual words first. Okay, so the first word is promptly. Okay, so you got prompt. Okay, if you do something prompt, uh, um, sorry, if something is prompt, it means it's on time, it's fast, and promptly means exactly at the right moment. Okay, so promptly. Promptly. That's it. Yes, it's a slight. The t is slightly there. Okay, um, but. Uh, let me give you the yeah immediately um no delay maybe a little delay but um practically no delay uh punctually is another word for promptly okay promptly okay promptly and some some people might throw the p away but the t's got to be there promptly okay okay next one tightening tightening yeah Good. So to tighten, and then it was tightening. Okay. Uh, then the next one. I know I've, I've said to you about the A sound. This this one doesn't have it. It's actually surface, not face. Surface. Surface. Yay. Good. And the next one is ran. To run. But then the past is ran. Run. Not run. Ran. Uh, like Anne. Like and. Ran. Yeah. That's it, yes. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. Um, then, not a nice word. Strangling. 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 <laughs> yeah, it feels when you say it, it's like being strangled. Strangling, when somebody's got their 
hands around your throat. They're strangling you. Okay. Um, the next one, again, it's the ending. It's jagged. Not jagged. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not jagged. I know so often the ED, the E is silent. Uh, it's not ed because ed. it's not actually the past form. It's just um, an adjective to say not smooth and very pointy. Jag Mountains are often jagged. Yeah, they go up and down, up and down in sharp points. Okay. Uh, not choking, choking, choking. Okay, we've got shocking, but choking. Strangling is Choke. like being choked, yes, choking. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, choke someone. Okay. Uh, next one for shiny uh, is a glance, or glance, oh. but glance, glance. Try it. Glance. Okay, glance. Good. And then we've got the A-E sound again, face. Okay, so when it's on face. its own, it's face. But when it's surface, it's surface. Okay? Face. face. Next face. one, just get the T at the face. end. Exploit. Exploit. Perfect. And then these, not those. I think you might have just misread it. These. These. That's it. And bragged. This is in the past, but it's a silent E. Okay, bragged. Bragged. Yeah, so we've got jagged, but bragged. This is why I always say the ED endings, you just have to develop a feel for them because, um, you know, the rules make no sense. <laughs> the only difference is to brag is a verb and jagged is an adjective. But when you're, when you're talking, um, when you're reading... When you're listening, you don't have time to work that out. You just have to know. <laughs> okay. Uh, you get a smiley for name. Well done. You corrected yourself. And gratifying. Well done. You worked it out. Which was very gratifying to me. <laughs> okay. So next person to read is April. April, are you okay to read? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I'm cold here. You're cold? Oh no! Yeah. Get near yeah, the fire. Yeah, it's cold, right? <laughs> Shall I... It's getting dark. Sorry, Oscar? It's getting darker. Maybe that's the reason why you are cold. Darker? No, it's getting... lighter here. <laughs> 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 you are in the, you are on in the south part of the of the world. We are on the north part. It's just the opposite of yours. Oh, it's cold. Oh, terrible. It has got colder, hasn't it? We had that lovely weather last yeah. week, and then a really yeah. rubbish weekend. <laughs> And yeah, now it's a lot no, colder. They, they said on the BBC today in the UK as well, it's going to be unseasonably cold this week. And I think that's going to affect us in Europe too, April. Just put another layer on. <laughs> oh, move closer to the fire. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what okay. the temperature is here. Um, 11, 12 degrees. Yeah, I'm just going to check. Only. We've got 14 here, 14 degrees centigrade here, so uh, which is 57 Fahrenheit, which is not very nice, to be honest. At least it's not raining. At least it's not raining. I did actually manage to get out in the garden um, yesterday in between rain showers. <laughs> okay. April, so. I meant... Sorry. Yeah, Oscar, carry on, carry on. A April, I meant here where we all are right now here. In this uh, environment. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Cool. Oscar, Please. you can, you can Give change. Give more, uh, more fire. If it's getting dark more and fire, you can't please. read, you can change. You can change the sun settings. Just go to world, sun, and then you can set it to midday or sunrise, sunset, or midnight if you want to. If you want to read by a, um, if you want to read by the fire. But it's bad for your eyes, so I'd suggest setting it to midday. <laughs> no, for me it's, it's okay. I leave it this way. But uh, I noticed that it, it started to get darker yeah, a few it minutes does. ago. Yeah, it, it can do. But Is it the same control. for you? 
Ok. Ok, so April. It's time ready. for the soup then, Lynn. It's time for soup, It's time yes. for the soup. <laughs> <laughs> ok. Pulu, Pulu said to Antonton, Buck can, sta can start a thousand pounds and break it out and walk off with, with it for a hundred yards, demanded Matthewson, a bonanza king, he of the 700th vaughn. And break it out and walk off with it for a hundred yards, John Thornton said cool, coolly. Well, Matthewson said slowly and deliberately so that all could hear, I've got a thousand dollars that says he can't. And there it is. So saying, he slammed a sack of gold, of gold dust of the size of a Bologna, Bologna sausage down upon the, bo the bar. Nobody spoke. Thornton's bluff, it bluff it was, had been called. He could feel a flash of warm blood creeping up his face. His tongue had tricked him. He did not know where the buck could start a thousand pounds, half a ton. The enormousness of it appalled. Oh, the enormousness of it appalled him. He had great faith in back strength and had often thought him capable, capa oh, capable of starting such a lot, but never as now had he faced the possibility of it. The eyes, the eyes of a dozen men fixed upon him, silent and waiting. Further, he had no thousand dollars, nor had hands or feet. I've got a sled standing outside now, with twenty fifty pound sacks of flour on it, Matthewson went on with brutal directness. So don't let that hinder you. Thornton did not reply. He did not know what to say. He glanced from face to face in the absent way of a man who has lost the power of thought and is seeking somewhere to find the thing that will start it going again. The face of Jim O'Brien, a mastodon king and all-time comrade, caught his eyes. It was as a cue to him, seeming to rouse him to do what he would never have dream dreamed of doing. Can you lend me a thousand? He asked, almost in a whisper. Come, Rand. Sure, answered O'Brien, thumping down a plethoric sack by the side of Matthewson's. Though it's little faith I'm having, John, that the beast can do the trick. The Eldorado tem emptied its occupants into the street to see the test. The tables were des deserted and the dealers and gamekeepers came forth to see the, the outcome of the wager and to lay odds. Comrade. Several hundred men, furred and mittened, bank around the sled without, within easy distance. Matthewson's sled, loaded with a thousand pounds of flour, had been standing for a couple of hours and in the intense cold, it was 60 below zero, the runners had frozen fast, of the, frozen fast to the hard-packed snow. Men offered odds of two to one that Buck could not budge the sled. A quibble arose concerning the phrase breakout. O'Brien contended it was Thornton's privilege to knock the runners loose leaving Buck to break it out from a dead standstill. Matthewson insisted that the phrase included breaking the runners from the frozen grip of the snow. A majority of the men who had witnessed the making of the bet decided in his favor, whereat the odds went up to three to one against Buck. There were no takers. Not a man believed him Capable, cap capable, capable, <laughs> capable of the feat. Thornton had been hurried into the wager, heavy with doubt, and now that he looked at the sled itself, the concrete fact, with the regular team of ten dogs curled up in the snow before it, the more impossible the task 
appeared. Matthewson waits jubilant. Three to one, he proclaimed. I'll lay you another thousand at that figure, Taunton. What they say? Taunton's doubt was strong in his face, but his fighting spirit was aroused. Despite the fighting spirit that soars above odds, above odds, above, above odds, fails to recognize the impossible and is deaf to all save the clamor of, for battle. He called Hans and Pete to him. Their sacks were slim, and with his own, the three partners could rake together only two hundred dollars. In the act of their fortunes, this sum was their total capital, yet they laid it unhesitatingly against Matthewson's six hundred. The team of ten dogs was unhitched, and Buck, with his own harness, was put into the sled. He had caught the contagion of the excitement, and he felt that it, in some way he must do a great thing for John Thornton. Murmurs of admiration admiration at his splendid appearance went up. He was in perfect condition, without an ounce of superfluous flesh, and the, and the 150 pounds that he weighed were, were so many pounds of grit and virility. His furry coat shone with the sheen of silk. Down the neck and across the shoulders, his mane in repose as it was, half bristled, and seemed to lift with every movement, as though excess of figure met, made each particular hair alive and active. The great breast and heavy forelegs were no more than in proportion with the rest of the body, where the muscles showed in tight rolls underneath the skin. Men felt these muscles and proclaimed them hard as iron, and the odds went down to two to one. Gatzer, Gatzer, started a member of the late of the latest dynasty, or dynasty, dynasty, a king of the Skokum benches. I offer you eight hundred for him, sir, before the test, sir, eight hundred just as he stands. Brandon shook his head and stepped to Buck's side. You must stand off from him. Matthewson protested, free play and plenty of room. The crowd fell silent, and could be heard the voices of the gamblers faintly offering two to one. Everybody acknowledged Buck a, magnific a, magnif a magnificent animal, but twenty fifty pound sacks of flour bulked, bulked too large in their eyes for them to loosen their Pouch strings. Very good. Fountain. Well okay, so sorry, we'll have to wait a moment to find out what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so curious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well done. Nicely read. A uh, couple of words for you and a couple of smileys too. And a bit of British and American English. I had to, I, I'm hoping it won't um, record, but I had to check myself on this one. <laughs> no. Okay, so the first one, I know it's got... Um, like an exclamation mark after each one but the second one is actually if you notice uh, not written in capitals and we tend to poo poo an idea okay and it sounds silly I know because poo is a child's word for the sh1t uh, but if you poo poo an idea it's like ah oh, poo poo it's like I don't believe you okay oh that's rubbish poo poo okay it's kind of fallen out of favor um, but uh, it's you might still come across it from time to time but it's said quite quickly okay but it's up to you if you want to repeat it April you might not want to go <laughs> ah, poo poo okay so the next one is majority the majority the stress was slightly different okay so try it majority 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 good and remember we say major Okay, like a major incident, but majority. Yeah, lovely English pronunciation. Uh, then again, the A ah sound rather than A. Waxed. It waxed. Wax. Yeah. And if you remember the moon, 
uh, I think we've had this before when we were talking about the uh, supermoon. The moon waxes and wanes, okay? So it can also mean to change in size. Waxed. Try it. Wax. That's it. Good. Waxed. Don't forget the D at the end. Waxed. Waxed. Good. Then uh, the next one, superfluous. Superfluous. Yeah. Superfluous. That's it. It's not super and then fluous. It's superfluous. Anything that's uh, more than you actually need is superfluous to a requirement. Okay. And then shon to shine. Okay. Then shon to shine. Shon. Shon. Yeah. Not shon. Not shon. Yeah. No. Shon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like on. Uh, then, I'm sorry, you nearly got it right, but it is dynasty. Oh, okay, dynasty. Yeah, there was a TV program called Dynasty. Actually, rubbish, absolute rubbish. It was more like dynasty, but uh, <laughs> that would be two words. <laughs> And then you get a smiley twice for capable. Okay, well done. You worked it out. Yeah. <laughs> So, to be capable, to be able to do something, yeah? And then uh, admiration. Well done for working that one out, too. And I just want to confirm, um, I say comrade, uh, but seemingly the British pronunciation is comrade. So, who knew? <laughs> I, I sound like an American. <laughs> so, comrade is uh, British. Comrade is British, yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, um, Marco's written and mare. Yes, mare. mare. And the sheep, Sean. Sean the sheep. Yeah, a lovely program. <laughs> I like Sean the sheep. Okay, any questions before we move on? No? Everybody's quiet. Eleanor, it is your... Um, everybody's very quiet, so I'll presume there are no questions. Eleanor, it's your turn uh, to... I almost oh, say yeah, above, Liz. You I do. almost say above. Yes, <laughs> it's above. Above and below. And then I remember Marco. <laughs> Lucky you, you have me <laughs> to make mistake before you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just one of those things, you know, I call it, um, lots of people call it fossilised mistake. It's kind of stuck in your brain like that. So it's very difficult to shake them. I've got words in German. I have the same problem. But um, the only way is uh, just practice, practice, practice. Find sentences, including the word above, and try reading them out loud and recording yourself. And just basically, you've got to beat your brain into submission. <laughs> So, Eleanor, are you ready to read? Uh, yes. Can we find I'm out ready. what happens in the race, in this um, challenge? <laughs> we need to know. So, whenever you're ready, okay? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'll start. Thornton knelt down by Buck's side. He took his head in his two hands and rested ch cheek on cheek. He did not playfully shake him as was his went on murmur soft love curses, but he whispered in his ear, as you love me, Buck, as you love me, was what he whispered. Buck whined with suppressed eagerness. The crowd was watching curiously. The affair was growing mysterious. It seemed like a conjuration. As Thornton got to his feet, Buck seized his mittened hand between his jaws, pressing in with his teeth and releasing slowly, half reluctantly. It was the answer in terms not of speech, but of love. Thornton stepped well back. Now, Buck, he said. Buck tightened the traces, then slugged them for a matter of several inches. It was the way he had learned. Gee! Thornton's voice rang out sharp in the tense silence. 
back swung to the right, ending the movement in a plunge that took up the slack and with a sudden jerk arrested his 150 pounds. The load quivered, and from under the runners arose a crisp crackling. Oh, Thornton commanded. Buck duplicated the maneuver, this time to the left. The crackling turned into a snapping, the sled pivoting and the runners zipping and grating several inches to the side. The sled was broken out. Men were holding their breaths, intensely unconscious of the fact. Now mush. Thornton's command cracked out like a pistol shot. Buck threw himself forward, tightening the traces with a jarring lunge. His whole body was gathered, compacted together in the tremendous effort, the muscles writhing and nothing like live things under the silky fur. His great chest was low to the ground, his head forward and down while his feet were flying like mud, the claws scurrying the hard packed snow in parallel grooves. The sled swayed and trembled, half started forward. One of his feet slipped, and one man groaned aloud. Then the sled lurched ahead in what appeared a rapid succession of jacks, though it never really came to a dead stop again. Half an inch, an inch, two inches, the jacks perceptibly diminished as the sled gained momentum. He caught them up till it was moving steadily along. Men gasped and began to breathe again, unaware that for a moment they had ceased to breathe. Thornton was running behind, encouraging back with short cheery words. The distance had been measured off, and as he neared the pile of firewood which marked the end of the hundred yards, a chair began to grow and grow, which burst into a roar as he passed the firewood and halted at command. Every man was tearing himself loose. Uh, every man was tearing himself loose, even Mattison. Hats and mittens were flying in the air. Men were shaking hands, it did not matter, matter with whom, and bubbling ever in a general incoherent babel. But Thornton fell on his knees beside Buck. Head was against head, and he was shaking him back and forth. Those who hurried up had him kissing Buck, and he kissed him along and fervently, and softly and lovingly. God, sir, God! Splattered the Skookum uh, Bench King. I'll give you a thousand for him, sir. A thousand, sir. Twelve hundred, sir. Thornton rose to his feet. His eyes were wet. The tears were streaming frankly down his cheeks. Sir, he said to the Skookum Bench King, No, sir, you can go to hell, sir. It's the best I can do for you, sir. Buck seized Thornton's hand in his teeth. Thornton shook him back and forth. As though animated by a common impulse, the onlookers drew back to a, a respectful distance. Nor were they again indiscreet enough to interrupt. Very good. Well done. Actually, that's yes. perfect. Five minutes. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> Uncanny. <laughs> Okay, beautifully read. Well done. A um, couple of words, just a couple. Um, uh, one's... Kitty. Well, no. Um, I, I'm almost tempted to think I misheard you, but it's it was slightly not long enough R. Uh, scarring. Ah, yes, scar. Scar. scar yes, yes, scar. it was too short. Yeah. I had the same impression. Yeah, I okay, remember. good. Yeah. I was. I thought, am I being fussy? Yeah, yeah absolutely right. <laughs> Okay, no, no, good. it was too late for me. I, I did notice it. <laughs> okay. Remember, you can stop and just repeat. It's fine. Okay. And then um, this next one, I'm just going to say, you've got to do more than now mush. Okay. It's really... <laughs> 
Okay, it's got an exclamation mark and it's written in capitals. So it would be yeah, now mush. Okay, he really wants, he's pushing the dog forward with his own words. Yeah, he's telling the dog what to do and he's giving it power. So you've got to give it a little bit more than now mush. Okay, so now mush. Try it. Now mush. Yeah, mush. It's a... Now, mush. That's it. The stress is really on the mush. That's his command. That's, oh. his, uh, that's, got, that's what's going to get him going forward with enough power to break through, to break out the ice, which is a big ask. But dogs are amazing. Dogs will, um, you have to be very careful when you tell a dog what to do because that dog will try its best to do what you've asked it to um, once you have that kind of relationship. Oh. It's where you see these um, if, if crufts, you know, the, the, the command, the agility dogs, etc. And you can go to these dog shows. I don't like the dog shows personally, but they get dogs to jump through hoops oh, no. of fire. Oh, and um, I'm like, yeah, should you really do that if it's not necessary? Just for entertainment, really? But there you go. That's what they did. And they won. And Buck did it because he loved his master. So, uh, let's see how we're doing. What about this, yeah. Lynn? Is it oh. pivot or pivot? Pivoting. To pivot? Pivoting, yeah? yeah. I, yeah. Pivot. Not I, yeah? Not I, yeah. To Eleanor pivot. just said yeah. pivot. Oh, Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> My second pair of ears caught you out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm adding that to the list. <laughs> Okay, well, well, uh, well heard. I, I, I was so, uh, I was almost sure that it's a spy, pivot before because we used that uh, term also in line dancing. Pivot quarter, pivot quarter. Hey, excellent! Yeah, it's amazing. You see, if you can do your hobbies in English, you learn a lot. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's, it's great, Rima, because I can't always. You know, I might be distracted by something, or I might be. Um, copying a word over already and I just miss it you know I try to listen a hundred percent but nobody can be a hundred percent so well well spotted April <laughs> this is how April got her observation badge you know guys okay Oscar are you still with us Oscar Wakey, wakey. Okay. Anybody here, Oscar? Or is it me? Give him a poke. Hang on. Send him an IM. Wakey, wakey. He said I'm here. Oh. I can't hear you. He wrote, wrote, wrote. Oh, right. Okay, Oscar, um, don't forget to unmute your mic. Because at the moment we can't hear you. Even though you've got a white I dot. I can see the white hole. Yeah, I can see he a white He has dot white too. dot. Yeah. Are you speaking, Oscar? Oh, what's going on? Oh, you just going <laughs> to... Why? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> He's unplugged his microphone. Strange, because he's still got a white dot. I guess it's connected to the um, sound card, not the actual mic. That's okay, Oscar. Take your time. You know, we're not in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Any luck? <laughs> I can't help you here, Oscar. I'm sorry. You know, if you unplug yourself. <laughs> hey, this is um, Learn English Next Network with Oscar Robledo Unplugged. <laughs> it is your fault. Totally. Totally. Uh, any chance of you getting it fixed? In the next five minutes. <laughs> okay. At least you can hear us. Uh, well, you are the last reader, so um, it won't be a case of skipping you. 
I, everybody has read already. So it will be a case Only of... Only dog. Only the, yes, just buck. <laughs> 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 Have a little chat. Well, what do you want to chat about then, Shiny? Yeah, we're on the last chapter, I know. And I think the last chapter is kind of a short chapter. Oh, it's not that short, actually. No way, because the thing is, it looks longer than it is because there's lots of the end of the Project Gutenberg e-book, The Call of the Wild by Jack London, blah, 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 blah. So there's lots of blah, blah. So there's not that much to go. What's your... <laughs> What am I having for lunch? Actually, I'm having leftovers for lunch. <laughs> Which is going to be a really weird lunch because I'm having the leftovers from Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the... Uh, remember, I'm not eating meat this um, next few weeks for the last few weeks and next few weeks. So on Sunday we had um, curried cauliflower and potato. So I'm going to put that into the bowl and then on Saturday I did uh, couscous with mint and lemon and um, so I'm going to put the couscous on top. I'm going to sprinkle some cheese over it. I'm going to make a couscous cauliflower curried cauliflower pie. <laughs> if I'm not here tomorrow you'll realize, you'll you'll um, figure it out. I poisoned myself. <laughs> 15 pages. That, I don't get pages, actually, Rima. I don't get pages. I just got one long stream of... Um, and it's very difficult to work out how long it will take to uh, read when it's just one long stream. Uh, and you can't uh, can, uh, zoom, zoom in, uh, z uh, zoom in uh, your text in Gutenberg, or you can't? Well, I'll show you in the stream. You can have a look at the stream and see what I get. It's just one long top to bottom so now you know why I find it very difficult to find where we are in the um, text <laughs> but why you don't use uh, I, I know for Sherlock Holmes or, or maybe for Tom Sawyer I I used uh, install uh, simple uh, e, uh, e oh I could do UB but I've got so much installed on it's... my computer um, and I find that just using the the um, the link to Gutenberg itself, it, it cuts down on... Because remember when I'm streaming and when I'm running the session in Kitely, it, it uses up a lot of my resources. So I try and keep the number of resources I'm using to a minimum. Um, hello? Hello! Wait. Hello, Oscar! <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're right it's okay it's okay we forgive you don't we guys we've been talking about my funny lunch <laughs> i just connected for just a second the micro and then connect it again plug it in again and it, it wasn't detected yeah. Yeah. i don't know why well basically there is a saying in english if it ain't broke don't fix it <laughs> so, uh, you and you know the, the famous law the famous law when you need something murphy's law yep yeah that's it look i wanted to, i wanted to tell you that the fact that uh, me being here today is absolutely unusual and that's because yesterday was the father's day here in spain and they gave us this day as holiday bank oh a bank holiday yeah I wondered, yeah. I wondered when I saw you log in, I thought, well, that's unusual. Oscar's not normally around on a Saturday. Uh, uh, sorry, on a Monday yeah. morning. And, um, yeah, what happened to the weekend? The lost weekend uh, on a Monday. I was like, okay, well, you know, come and go as you as you wish, as you know, in these sessions. So, uh, but thank you for joining us on your, what is your Father's Day? <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, I think you celebrate that on June or maybe on... Uh, uh, May, I don't know, there's a difference between there UK is. and Mother's Germany. Day, Mother's Day and Father's Day are celebrated on different days in the UK. Um, uh, so in the UK this year, Father's Day is on the 18th of June. And yeah. uh, Mother's Day was, um, um, let me think, when, when was Mother's Day? 
no no it's next month it's next week 26th of march next week i tend not to keep track of mother's day and father's day anymore because of course i'm an orphan now so um if anybody would like to uh, adopt me then <laughs> especially, especially if you've got a european passport i'm i'm open to any <laughs> any offers of adoption <laughs> okay oscar have you kept your place in the book yeah okay. chapter seven that, yeah, the final chapter. So if you'd like to start reading. Sure. If there are no problems, yeah. Okay. The sounding of the call. When Buck earned $1,600 in five minutes for John Thornton, he made it possible for his master to pay off certain debts and to journey with his partners into the East after a fabled lost mine the history of which was as old as the history of the country. Many men had sought it, few had found, found it, and more than a few there were who had never returned from the quest. This lost mine was steeped in tragedy and shrouded in mystery. No one knew of the first man. The oldest tradition stopped before it got back to him. From the beginning there had been an ancient and ramshackled cabin. Dying men had shrunk to it and to the mine the site of which it marked, clinching their testimony, testimony with nuggets that <laughs> were unlike any known grade of gold in the northland northland but no living man had looted this treasure house treasure house and he the dead were dead wherefore john thornton and pete and hanks with buck and half a dozen other ducks faced into the east on a unknown trail to achieve where men and dogs as good as themselves had failed. They slid it seventy miles up the Jutun, swung to the left into the Stewart River, past the Mayo and the McQuestion and held hand and held on until the Stewart itself became a streamlet, threading the upstanding peaks which marked the backbone of the continent. John Thornton asked little of man of or nature. He was afraid of the wild. With a handful of salt and a rifle he could plunge into the wilderness and fare wherever he pleased and as long as he pleased. Being, being in no haste, Indian fashion, he hunted his dinner in the course of the day's trouble, and if he failed to find it, like the Indian, he kept on traveling, secure in the knowledge that sooner or later he would, came, he would come to it. So, on this great journey into the east, Straight meat was the bill of the fair. Ammunition and tools principally made up of made up the load on the sled and the time card was drawn upon the limitless future. To back it to back it was boundless delight. This hunting, fishing and indefinite indefinite wandering through strange places for weeks at a time they would hold hold on steadily 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 day after day and for weeks upon the end they would camp here and there the dogs lo loafing and the men burning holes through frozen muck and gravel and washing countless pans of dirt by the heat of the fire. Sometimes they went hungry, sometimes they feasted riotously, 
all according to the abundance of game and the fortune of hunting. Summer arrived, and dogs and men packed on their backs, rafted across the blue mountain lakes, and descended or ascended, ascended unknown rivers in slender boats which sowed from the standing forest. The, month, the months came and went, and back and forth they twisted through the unch uncharted vastness, where no men were, and yet where men had been if the lost cabin were true. They went across divided in summer blizzards, shiver, shivered under the midnight sun on naked mountains between the timber line and the eternal sh snows, dropped into summer valleys amid swarming nuts and flies, and in the shadows of glaciers picked strawberries and flowers as grape and fur as any the Southland could boast. In the fall of the year they penetrated a weir weird lake country, sad and silent, where wild fold had been, but where then, where then they there was no life, nor sign of life, only the blowing of chill, wind, chill wind, winds, the forming of ice in sheltered places, and the melancholy, melancholy rippling of waves on lonely beaches. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Pet. Fabled. Okay, fable. Steeped. Yeah, cabin, yeah. I was not sure. Yeah. I was hesitating about that. <laughs> An unknown trail. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> you come, yeah. Yeah, but to watch them, yeah. Wilderness, ah, wilderness, yeah, yeah, I remember that, wilderness, yeah. Yeah. Rubble, rubble. Yeah. Yeah. 
a bit confusing because, for example, wild and wilderness, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Just experience that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Riotously. But that's a violent a demonstration. Okay. Yes. Okay. Abundance, 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 yeah. Divides. Divides. Blizzard, blizzards. I was thinking of the animal. No, the no blizzard. No, the the reptile. The reptile. Blizzard. Ah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only one. We read an article. We, we read an article. I think that uh, April was there. Maybe shiny with Natasha about one lizard uh, who, uh, which can live in, in uh, like uh, be frozen in in uh, some ice. And I, but I forgot. Maybe April remember or shiny the name of. Yeah, naked. Yeah, naked. I don't know what what, what I did because uh, I, I know that word. No, you look when when I'm reading and maybe I make so many mistakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 that's not what I mean. No, 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 Lynn, that's not what I mean. I mean that I'm making mistakes. Uh, I, I, I get amazed because I know that word, naked. I, I know it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. running out of neurons related to language. <laughs> Let's leave it there.
Wild Fowl. Ya. Hmm. The Upstanding Epics. The Upstanding Epics. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. The Upstanding Peaks. The Bill of Fair. Uh, uh menu i have written it yes yes i i have it on my list yeah uh-huh He was an afraid of the wild. Yeah, yeah, wins, yeah. Uh, I noticed that. Uh, uh, Lynn, I really appreciate your help. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I'm so sorry. But I must work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe maybe a shiny ma means that next week we are we have little to read so we have oh it's interesting time page. left yeah <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Bye bye. Bye. Privilege, but we'll see how it goes for now, okay? But um, it's as secure as it was before, okay? <laughs> Learn English. Learn English.de is now fully HTTPS compliant. We ran the test at the weekend. 
yes still got a few tweaks and missing files to find but uh, anyway okay okay so on that note we will go to um oh where were we up to last week uh we were up to it was at circle city ere the year was out okay so find that in the book it's a, in, in an awkward place but um there you go uh, Marco, Rima, are you in place? In the okay, book? Have you found your bookmark? <laughs> I, yes, I found it. Okay, whenever you're ready to start reading then. Okay. It was at Circle City. Uh, the year was out. The, that uh, Pete's apprehensions were realized. Released. Uh, Black Parton, a man evil-tempered and malicious, had been picking a quarrel with the tenderfoot at the bar when Thornton stepped good-naturedly nature, between. Buck, as was his custom, was lying in a corner, head on post, watching his master's every action. Barton struck out, without warning, straight from the shoulder. Thornton was sent spinning and saved himself from falling only by clutching the rail of the bar. Those who were looking on, on heard what was neither bark, bark nor yelp, but something which is best described as a roar. And they saw Buck's body rise up in the air as he left the floor for Barton's throat. The man saved his life by instinctively throwing out his arm, but was held back backward to the floor with Buck on top of him. Buck loosed his teeth from the flesh of the of the arm and drove in again for the throat. Okay, so Eleanor, have you got your mojo back? Um, yes. Sorry, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I have uh, seen uh, you are on my list of active speakers, so it does mean that it's working. Normally, quite... it means it is working. Uh, yes, yeah. so you, yeah. you need to you need to see that little white dot. Um, okay, when I said to Eleanor, "Have you got your mojo back?" Uh, your mojo is like your power, your um, ability to do things, your magic secret sauce, if you like. <laughs> So, um, and, and if I you lose like your mojo, have... it's like you've lost okay. your magic, um, your influence, if you like. But it can also be, I mean, I was saying this weekend to Hubby when he was trying to explain something about HTTPS and the internet. And I went, it's just magic. And he went, what do you mean? I said, it's just fairy dust and magic. <laughs> That really annoyed him. <laughs> oh, by the way, Lee, uh, every bro? time I want, I want to, uh, to to go to the forum, they give me always the message: this site is not uh, safe. It's probably what you need to do is refresh your cache because we're now HTTPS on. Um, we're HTTPS on Learn English, okay, but we're not HTTPS on the forum okay uh, for example I log into the forum when I go to the forum I don't get that message um, I get your connection to this site is not secure okay and that just means it's not HTTPS um, but I don't get an it's not safe so I think you need to refresh your cache okay the only way you'd get that problem is if you come from an HTTPS site into um, the forum through a link that's saying HTTPS okay if somebody tries to link to the web to the forum using HTTPS you will get a warning because it's not HTTPS and I can't afford HTTPS for the forum vanilla charges too much if it becomes a huge issue in the future with Google etc um, then we'll probably have to move everything on to discuss only because discuss is HTTPS and they don't charge us for the uh, Buck had sprung in on the instant, and at the end of 300 yards, amid, 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 
amid a net swirl of water, he overhauled Thornton. When he felt him grasp his tail, Buck headed for the bank, swimming with all, with all his splendid strength. But the progress shoreward was slow, the progress downstream amazingly rapid. From below came the fatal roaring uh, where the wild current went wilder and was rent in shreds and spray by the rocks which uh, thrust through like the teeth of an enormous comb. The suck of the water as it took the beginning of the last steep, steep pitch was frightful, and Dorton knew that the shore was impossible. He scrapped furiously over, over a rock, bruised across a second and, and struck a third with crashing force. He clutched its slippery top with both, both hands, releasing back, and above the roar of the churning water shouted, Go, Buck, go! Buck could not hold his own and swept on downstream, struggling desperately, desperately, but unable to win back. When he heard Thornton's com uh, command repeated, he partly reared, reared out of the water, throwing his head high, as though for a last look, then turned obediently toward the bank. He swam powerfully and was dragged ashore by feet and hands at the very point where swimming ceased to be possible and destruction began. They knew that the time men could cling to a slippery rock in the face of that dry, dri driving current was a matter, a matter of minutes and they ra ran as fast as they could up the bank to a point far above where Thornton was hanging on. They attached the line with which uh, they had been snubbing the boat to Buck's neck and shoulders, being careful that it should neither strangle, strangle him nor impede his swimming, and launched him into the stream. Uh, he struck out bold boldly, but not straight enough into the stream. He discovered the mistake too late, when Thornton was abreast of him and a bare half dozen strokes away while he was being carried helplessly past. Okay, well, oh, sorry. Yeah, well done. Okay. <laughs> Nicely read. Nicely okay. read. Sorry. <laughs> I was um, no, a bit stuck on my... Um, key. I don't know why, but it wouldn't uh, switch on. So, uh, Welcome, Oscar. Hi. I see Hello, you tried to welcome. log in earlier, but uh, yeah, the session was yes. back for Marion's session today. So sorry if you were waiting in vain. It was on the calendar, though, so <laughs> I'm not 100% sorry. <laughs> no I only problem. noticed you logged in when I was logging in. I was looking at who'd been logged and I was like, oh, no, Oscar was here. And he would have probably thinking, well, it's been cancelled, but it hasn't. Just put back. Okay, my session this morning was cancelled. As the next two weeks is the same, by the way. Okay, this session will run. My webinar jam session will be Marion's Skype session. So uh, I hope that's not too disruptive. Um, Oscar, are you okay to read today? Uh, yes, but I don't know where the text is. That's okay, we can give you the link, not an issue. Okay, I'm sure somebody will send you the link. <laughs> Let's have a look at Marco's, uh, Rima's. Thank you. Okay, so Rima, here are the individual words. Okay, to realize, so it says realized. Uh. Uh, realized. You started saying it correctly and then you decided it was a different word altogether. I can't remember what you I, actually I, said, but... <laughs> released. <laughs> released, I said yeah, released. Yeah, but it is realized. Yeah, yeah. Now, in this, realized. in this context, it means comes about. If you realize a plan, realize can also mean to suddenly understand something or to recognize that something... Oh. This time, the man succeeded only in partly block blocking, 
and his throat was torn open. Then the crowd was upon Buck, and he was driven off. But while a surgeon checked the bleeding, he rolled up and down, growling furiously, attempting to rush in, and being forced back by an array of hostile clubs. A miners meeting called on the spot, decided that the dog had sufficient provocation and Buck was discharged. But his reputation was made, and from that day his name spread through every camp in Alaska. Later on, in the fall of the year, he saw John Thornton's life in quite another fashion. The three partners were lining a long and narrow pulling boat down a bed stretch of rapids on the 40-mile creek. Hans and Pete moved along the bank, snubbing with a thin manila rope from tree, from, uh, tree to tree, while Thornton remained in the boat, helping its descent by means of a pole and shouting directions to the shore. Back on the bank, worried and anxious, kept abreast of the boat, his eyes never off his master. At a particularly bad spot, where a ledge of barely submerged rocks jutted out into the river, Hans cast off the rope, and while Thornton pulled the boat out into the stream, ran down the bank with the end in his hand to snap the boat when it had cleared the ledge. This, this it did, and was flying downstream in a current as swift as a mill race, when Hans checked it with the, the rope and checked too suddenly. The boat flirted over and snapped it uh, to the bank bottom up, bottom up while Thornton flung sheer, sheer out of it, was carried downstream toward the worst part of the rapids. Uh, a stretch of wild, of wild water in which no swimmer could live. Could live. Could 